All right, Eric, should we get this going? Awesome. Hello, everyone. I am Macy Kamsa. Um, well, I should say, first off, good evening and welcome to Trails ATL Round 3 public meeting for the Southeastern District of Atlanta. I am Macy Kamsa. I am a landscape architect for Kaizen Collaborative, the design team supporting the PATH Foundation on this project. Um, so as you see here, this will be the agenda for tonight. I would love and appreciate if everyone could sign in with your name and email in the chat box so we are able to, to be sure and accurate to reflect the people that are here today um, and also give some feedback. Um, and then lastly, please note that this presentation is being recorded. The recording and a copy of the presentation will be available at trails atl.com slash public meeting um, and it should be on there uh, by tomorrow morning. Um, I would like to introduce Tara Buckner from the city of Atlanta to welcome us to tonight's meeting. Good evening everyone. I'm Tara Buckner and I'm the urban planner for the city of Atlanta's Department of Parks and Recreation. Thank you so much for participating. Tonight begins round three of Trails ATL a plan to link the city with safe and inviting multi-use trails. After seven months of field research, plan reviews, public meetings, focus groups, and stakeholder interviews, we will be presenting your preliminary phase one trails for your districts. These all ages, all abilities trails get you to places you want to go in a climate friendly, ecologically conscious way that will increase your quality of life and decrease your costs and frustrations. I see, um, I, let's see if we're joined by um, anyone. Oh, I see someone has their hand up. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering where the ATL DOT representative is. There's not one this evening, so this is a, a plan that is sponsored by Parks and Recreation. Okay, it's just that trails are transportation, not recreation, so I'm a little confused. Very good. So, well, let's uh, listen let... to the presentation, and we'll be okay. happy to follow up with you about that. Okay. But thank you for coming. So um, are there any council members uh, here with us tonight? All right, well, um, then I will just hand it over to Eric Ganther, um, our partner at PATH Foundation, so. Very good, thank you very much, Tara. Thank you, Macy. Uh, welcome everyone. We really appreciate that you're taking some time from your dinner hour to join us for Trails ATL round three. So I will be doing a presentation this evening, then we're gonna have some time for Q&A afterwards. I wanna make sure that we have plenty of time to, to uh, address any questions, concerns that you may have about our planning effort. So the we're going to go through some planning update updates tonight, tell you where we've been, where we're going, and what the intent is um, to move forward. We're gonna talk about some design guidelines and the administrative processes that we will be following as part of the TRAILS ATL plan. Then we're going to share with you our preliminary phase one implementation plan. So this is an important part of the, of the presentation this evening. Please stay tuned for that. Afterwards, we will share with you some ways that you can give us feedback and have some time for Q and A. So planning updates, we want to go through, we're going to start here and we're going to find out, get a sense of, of y'all's experience in the room. How many have you have attended previous trails, ATL meetings or events? So we're going to have about five or six questions over the course of this meeting. And this is the first one. Macy, would you pop that up, please? So have you attended previous trails, ATL meetings or events? Please let us know. We'll give that a few seconds here, Macy. I'll let you kind of get a sense of when the 
the microwave popcorn stops popping and you can let us know when it's done. Okay, so we're about half of you are, are have attended previous events and meetings and about half of you have not. So I'll keep that in mind. And as we are proceeding, um, if there are questions, you can hold those till the end. You can uh, submit those questions in the chat box and we can review them. But let me get through the whole presentation and then we can talk about um, some details in case you're unfamiliar with where we've been and where we're going. All right. So let's start with why. So this is the fundamental, why are we doing Trails ATL? And why did the Department of Parks and Recreation hire the PATH Foundation to do a citywide trail plan? Short answer, you want trails. You have told us in many surveys around the city um, over, an, over a number of years, regional surveys, city surveys, the uh, Parks and Recreation did as part of their comprehensive trail I'm sorry, Comprehensive Parks Plan did a survey, statistically valid, meaning that it reflected the geography and the demography of the city almost exactly. And in that survey, the number one, the top priority for investment that you told us you wanted was paved multi-use trails. So with that in mind, the city hired the PATH Foundation and got together the different departments who would influence and have impact on trail planning. So Parks and Recreation is leading the trails plan because this is this has a large greenway component and I will describe later what a greenway is and what that means in relation to trails. Uh, Department of Transportation is a key uh, part of our core team. So Mr. Grundler asked earlier, like why isn't transportation here? Well, transportation is here. They might not be exactly in the virtual room at the moment, but they are a key piece of our planning effort, core team members. I speak with them almost every day as we are doing this trails plan. We're also joined by Department of City Planning because trails have an impact on land use, an impact on zoning. Watershed management is joining us as well as in the core team. Why watershed? Because trails and sewer lines go great together. Those greenways like to follow that watershed management infrastructure because you get a twofer on that scenario. And then, of course, the Beltline. The Atlanta Beltline has truly been an inspiration for the city, has transformed how we thought of ourselves, and is really the launching point for continuing trails throughout the rest of the city. Now, the PATH Foundation, some of you may know who the PATH Foundation is, but for those of you who don't, we have been in business for 33 years. And all we do is trails. We plan, we design, we build trails. That's all we do. And we were born in and committed to Atlanta. We started doing work before the Olympics uh, working on the Stone Mountain Trail. We have built the Silver Comet Trail towards Alabama. Uh, we are working on Path 400. Um, a lot of the Beltline was, was uh, an effort of the Path Foundation early on. Southtown Trail, Proctor Creek Greenway, the list goes on. Trails is what we do. And so as a result of that, um, uh, Parks and Recreation hired us. Now, We've built about 327 miles of those trails, primarily in Georgia, mostly in the Atlanta region. We have raised $85 million of philanthropic monies to support 355 million in public funds to build those trails. Now, that's a little bit about us. We wanna know a little bit more about you. So what we would like now is we'll have our second poll question. Please share with us your home zip code.
Okay, Macy, what are we, are this the popcorn stop popping? All right, very good. So let's see, 30307, 30310, very good. 30312, 13, there's 14. Yep. I'm looking at the map as I'm seeing this, very helpful. My zip code is, my zip code is in the list, but it wasn't on the question. Oh, really? Okay, which one is that? 30316. Here it is, right here. So we'll add that. Can you, Macy, make a note of that, that there's one more person in 30316? Yes. So this is out here in um, it's East, East Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that. I know that zip code well. I used to, I still own a house there, actually. So that's great. So we've got a pretty good balance here in the on the east side, uh, 30316, 17, 12. Looking at 30315, we've got a couple of people. What about 54? Don't have anybody from 54. That would have been helpful. 30310. Got a few people from 30310. That's great. Okay, 30307. All right. Good. So that's that's a decent representation. We'd like, we always want more, of course. We especially want more from the south side. So, um, but thank you. This is really helpful, giving us a sense of who's in the room tonight. So I will continue. When we talk about all ages trails, we are talking about um, <clears throat> multi-use trails are for all ages. That's eight years old to 80 years old, all abilities. So that includes people in wheelchairs, people pushing walkers, people pushing strollers, um, kids learning how to ride a bike, old folks remembering how to ride a bike, eight mm -hmm. years old to 80 years old. And when we are doing work and people in a wheelchair are feel comfortable, when they feel welcome, when they feel safe, then we know that we have done our work. And so if somebody in a wheelchair can access our facilities, then so can everybody else. So that's what we're up to, all ages, all abilities, all Atlantans. Now, when we say multi-use trails, there are a couple of types. There is a greenway, so that is a park-like trail. So when you're on a greenway, you feel like you're in a park. You're in a natural setting. Typically, you're well away from traffic. You can relax, hang out with your friends and family members in that space and not worry about anything. Street trails are what we do when we kind of can't do greenways, right? So greenways are, are the, the gold standard, if you will, of trail building. But we can make street trails work quite well as well. So the... The best one, uh, you know, arguably would be the side path. And the side path is where you have that greenway style experience, but adjacent to a roadway separated by a substantial buffer. Often that is a landscape buffer. And here's an example. This is the Beltline on Wiley Street in East Atlanta and Reynolds Town area. And what they've done is they've planted this nice row of crepe myrtles along a fairly narrow strip. But look at the shade that it provides. It also separates you from traffic. So those side paths are really valuable in the trail planning. When we can't do a side path, then we look at uh, streets for all. And that's this box number three. This is where bikes and scooters are in the street. And then there's a sidewalk for walking. Sometimes that's useful to separate those two when there's a high volume of, of people biking and walking. And then uh, number four, shared streets. So shared streets, those are low volume, low speed neighborhood streets that don't get a lot of action where, you, where we would feel safe and we would feel good about recommending to a 12 year old to get on a bike and go ride around out there. That's the measuring stick. If we feel comfortable with our kids on that street, then we're doing all right. Now, today, the existing trail network, and by existing, we mean built, but also funded to be built. Like it's in the pipeline, it's gonna happen within the next couple of years. We're looking at about 107 miles of greenway and side path. Those are the top two that we're really shooting for. So 107 miles, that's 40% of Atlantans have 10 minute access 
to one of these high quality trails, 10 minute access, typically walking. That's how we measure that. So we want to build that. We want to build both of those numbers up. And, and that will depend on how much support we get in different parts of the city for expanding the trail network. Now we've got, this is round three of our public outreach. So we've done two previous rounds. Our first one was in March to May, the springtime. And we went to the uh, neighborhood planning units. That's what NPU means, neighborhood planning units, of which there are 25 in Atlanta. And we went to all of them and we asked people two questions. What kind of trail do you want and where do you want it to go? That round one was accompanied by a survey and I'm gonna share some of that data with you. Round two was in the summertime. After you told us where you wanted to go and how you wanted to get there, we came back and we presented the opportunities that we saw, the whole range of opportunities around the entire city. This is where we could build a greenway. This is where we could build a street trail. And we know from experience that where we can do that. That's past experience of 33 years of building trails really coming uh, to support the city uh, at this time. So we asked them about those trail opportunities. We got, you know, took, got their opinions, got your opinions about it. We asked folks, how should we prioritize these, you know, these trails? Which ones should we prioritize first? So we, we gave you the whole range of opportunities and then you told us your thoughts on those and then you helped us understand how we should rank what is left. So round three, we're talking about where we're gonna go first. <clears throat> Pardon me, where we're gonna go first. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the design guidelines. We want to you know, have a discussion about what does a trail literally mean? So we'll talk, we'll talk about that as well. Want folks to know we've had a number of focus groups that include the police department, the public schools, all of the commercial improvement districts, the colleges, all of the colleges in the city, the parks, the friends of parks groups, the conservancies there. We have a, a fantastic focus group um, composed of people with disabilities who shared their experience and their frustration of moving around the city of Atlanta. We had social advocacy groups, um, housing, so housing is a really important focus group for us, where housing is going to be built, especially affordable housing. We want to make sure that a trail can link those to the key destinations where people want to go. So remember, there were two questions in round one, so I want to talk about those. What kind of trail do you want and where do you want it to go? Well, so this is the first one. What kind of trail do you want? And this is what you told us. 98%, and this is with 1,500 responses, 98% of you would feel comfortable recommending a greenway to your friends and family members. 75% of you would feel comfortable recommending a side path to friends and family members. Those are really big numbers out of 1,500 response all over the city. So we feel really comfortable saying that we should be focused on greenways first and then side paths. Because you see what happens in the bottom row. So if there's a bike lane and it has some level of protection, people are still really comfortable with it. But as soon as that protection goes away, their support plummets. So you have 8% of people would recommend an unprotected bike lane to friends and family members. And the images that you see here are the images that were used in that in those survey questions. So to get to get a sense. And that was, yeah, that's the kind of trail you want. And then where do you want it to go? So we asked people all over the city, where do you want to go? Like how? And we gave about 15 different options, um, not specific locations, but kind of ideas, right? Just because it's going to vary by the city and we didn't want to give you 3,000 options to choose from. So we boiled it down. And number one was commercial areas. People want to get to their restaurants, their bars, their barber shops, their grocery stores, those social spaces where commerce happens. They want to go and interact with the world and they want to use a trail to get there. 
Number two, parks. People want to get to their parks on a trail. They don't want to necessarily have to get into a car to drive to a park to then have that experience. They'd rather walk or bike to those locations. Number three, the Beltline. The Beltline has been a smash success in Atlanta. People have really taken to the Beltline. They love the Beltline. So we have heard all over the city, we want to get to the Beltline, even in parts of the city that are quite a ways from the Beltline. We still want to get, be able to get to the Beltline. We want to get there on a bicycle. We want to get there on a scooter. Number four, MARTA. MARTA stations, train stations, but also the bus route. The bus, buses are the un, unsung heroes of public transportation, and they are a vital part of how people get around the city. We want to make sure trails and transit work together. And then schools. Uh, schools have been, it's, we've learned so much talking with our school partners, uh, including students. So I'm thinking of students at Deerwood Academy, for example, um, who had a class project to find what was something that they could do in their community that would improve the, uh, the climate. And their response was to build a trail so they could get to school and their parents wouldn't have to drive them. So I said, you all are hired. <laughs> uh, fourth graders are now, you know, that is, that's exactly the kind of response that we would expect from, you know, the wisdom of a 10 year old. The same thing happened at Benteen Elementary School. So that's in, in the great south and east part of the city. And the students there wanted to have, be connected to a green space. They want to trail from their school to a green space. So we heard them. But those are the places people want to go, you told us. How you want to get there and where you want to go. Now, in the next round, we looked at, we asked some different questions. So that was round one. Now we're in round two, and I'm kind of going through where we've been together. So you can see. So we asked folks straight up, should the city make building trails a priority? I was kind of scared when we asked this question. Well, if they say no, well, they didn't say no. And in fact, 99% said yes, and no, I'm not cooking the books. 99% said yes. Now, some of them had caveats. They're like, yes, if, and you can see the list of things that they were concerned about in kind of the order in which we received them, safety, jobs and transit, make sure it goes to housing, those affordable housing in particular, concern about displacement, don't want to build a trail to an area and then have that be some cause for displacement in a neighborhood, um, wayfinding and natural surfaces. Those were issues that were raised. Now, that was, you know, should we? And then, all right, if we should, then how should we prioritize where to build trails? And the number one response to that was utilitarian. Like, where can the maximum number of people get the benefit from it? So if this is going to be a public investment, then we should do it in a way that the maximum number of people can appreciate the experience. Number two, um, extend existing trails. Of course, right? So there are segments of trails around the city and this happens in um, uh, South Atlanta. The South Town Trail is a bit of an orphan out there in South Bend Park. It doesn't really connect to anything. And so we want to do something on that front. The East Side Trolley Trail, another one, it's there, but then it isn't. And then you have the belt line. And so we are working with, um, with stakeholders on, on closing that connection. And we're working with stakeholders to close the connection between Southtown Trail and the Beltline. I'll show you that later. The other two uh, key categories here are really similar, which is areas currently underserved by trails and areas with historically low public investment. So where have we not spent money generally and where have we not spent money on trails in a specific area? So we'll keep that in mind as we're laying out uh, a citywide network. Okay, so this is an important question we want to ask you. It's our third question. Should the city seek to link together its parks and green spaces 
with all ages, all physical abilities trails for recreational and transportation purposes. Macy? Question, sorry. Okay, thank you very much. So, yes. Yes, we should. And, and you know, there are those, we still have some questions, right? So I don't want to, not going to take this and run with it all the way, but there's, and this has been repeated around the city, people like, yes, we would like the idea of an emerald necklace. And the emeralds are the parks and the necklace part is the trail that connects them. And the example that I love to give on this is the city of Minneapolis, Minnesota, which oddly enough has some of the highest uh, uh, percentages of people who walk and bike to work of any place in the country, even though five months out of the year, it's under six feet of snow. So if they can do it, they have a, a, a park system that is linked by trails. That's how they do it, right? They've really shifted the culture, taking advantage of their green spaces in that way. Thank you. Thank you. That's really helpful. All right. So a little more wonky stuff for you. We've got design guidelines and the administrative process. It's not the most exciting stuff, but it's critical that we understand how these pieces work. So the design guidelines, this is a draft, and I want to highlight this thing in the corner. Guidelines are not requirements. So really, when, we're, when we are out building a trail in a, in a neighborhood, this is kind of what we are shooting towards. But, we, you know, we make exceptions in different circumstances. That's the nature of building in the real world. But when we are talking about design guide, guidelines, we have some goals. So we kind of keep this in mind when we're evaluating our circumstances. Are we promoting health and well-being, right? Are we getting people out there? Are we getting the maximum number of people? Are we promoting alternative transportation? Are we making it easier for people to walk or bike or scoot? Um, to get someplace rather than drive in a car? Are we promoting equitable access? Are we making sure that everybody in the city has access to this wonderful amenity? Or is it just some, right? So we wanna make sure that this is equitable. This is something for the entire city. Everybody gets to participate. We wanna make sure that we're protecting the natural environment. We wanna make sure that we are supporting affordable housing. And the design has to consider long-term maintenance. We want to make sure when we build something, we don't have to come out four years later and replace it and hope that there's money at that time to do that. And I know some of you who are familiar with some of our trails that we built a number of years ago, South Town Trail pops up here, where the bridges were made of wood. We had... Um, wood bridges, because at the time there wasn't a lot of money. So we're like, well, this is what, you know, that's, we'll build a wood bridge. Wood bridges rot over time. And now a number of them are in pretty bad shape. And so going forward, Path Foundation isn't doing that anymore. We are using, when we build bridges, we are building with a concrete base. There might be wood support structures that don't rot over time or don't rot for many, many, many years but it's those surface boards that just don't really work. So we don't do that anymore. Um, so when we're talking uh, materials in that way, we're talking concrete is really, that's the, the primary mode of building a multi-purpose trail. Why? Because it's the easiest to maintain. It's the easiest to put down. It's the easiest to maintain. There are trails that Path Foundation poured 30 plus years ago that are still like brand new, right? There's no cracks in them. They've held together very well. They've cost the city nothing to maintain. Asphalt is another option. We use asphalt when we're in the road 
and we're going to do a road trail, especially if the, the road is already asphalt. So that makes sense in that circumstance. There are situations where they, uh, there might be spur trails or there might be aspects of the trail that are hard packed dirt or slate chip. And those are typically in scenarios where the regulatory agencies will not allow per, uh, concrete. So if that is the circumstance, then we still want the trail and then we will use these, these alternatives. When we say trail width, we're typically talking 12 foot trail. But there are a lot of circumstances where 10 foot is appropriate on a side path. Those are often 10 feet, sometimes 12. It depends on, on the volume of people we're looking at. Um, but know that that's the case. And typically there's a, a, a trail will have a border. So we like a minimum of three feet on either side of that. Um, so that if there, it helps with visibility, if you're going around a corner, it's also a chance to plant some uh, native seed mix, what we call, so kind of native wildflowers on the side, that's an opportunity for that, which brings us into the next one, environmental. Native shade trees are really important to us, right? So when we are going through a space, we avoid mature trees. Um, unless it's, there's absolutely no other way, but we really work to avoid taking mature trees. We don't like to take any trees if we don't have to, we would rather not. And if we do have to take some, they are replaced as is required by the city's tree ordinance. In addition to that, trails are an opportunity to plant shade trees. So those street trails, now I showed you the crepe myrtles, those are not native shade trees, but they are shade trees. There are other places where we have trails where we do plant native shade trees, and we like that. If there's enough room for them to have a nice life in that landscape buffer, that's what we like to do. The other, um, some other key concepts here, the safety components, lighting and security cameras. So lighting is, uh, the Beltline has a standard, every 90 feet there is a light. And that might be appropriate in a lot of the trails in the different neighborhoods, but maybe in a natural area, it doesn't, you know, maybe we don't want lighting in there. Or maybe we have lighting and we turn it off, right? So that it's, it's maybe it's the lights stay on until eight o'clock and then they go dark and then they start back up at six in the morning. And what we've learned from the Atlanta public schools is that they will accept a trail as a means to get to school if there is lighting. So at the times when the kids are going to be there, they will not allow, they're not going to support a trail going to school that's dark in the morning. They're not going to do it. And I respect that. So that would be a consideration. Security cameras. Now those are some people really like the idea of security cameras and, and understand the value that they can add from a security perspective. Others aren't so convinced. So we work with the different neighborhoods and the communities to understand kind of what's the feeling that do you want those? Typically we're finding that people do want security cameras and those could be at least at the trailhead entrances or the places where you're going to have the most interaction. Um, so those are, but those are the design guidelines and I wanted folks to understand some of these components. Okay, another question. Question number four. Macy, if you would. What is your biggest concern about this proposed trail expansion? Right, so if we build more trails. What do you, what, what worries you about that? Maybe nothing, but maybe something does. And this is what we're trying to really gauge and understand where people are at with that. And give that a second. We need people to have time to read through all of those options. I 
Okay. All right, this is good. So what I'm seeing here, <clears throat> are you all able to see the the uh, the results pop up on the screen? Yes, okay, good. So what I'm seeing here, crime impact, there's a little bit of concern, environmental impact, we're very aware of those. User safety in, re in relation to accidents and crashes. Uh, maintenance after trails are built, agree. I mean, these are those are the front yard impacts and mailboxes that didn't register. It won't get built fast enough. Yes, so um, I appreciate the impatience, but I also, I want people to understand that this is a community-driven process and community-driven processes just take a while. We want to make sure that these that these trails are done with people and not to them. And so to, to do that, it just we have to give people time to catch up, right? You know, there's a lot, there's a, a number of you here tonight, but there are literally tens of thousands of people who are not here tonight. So we need to take the time to make sure that people understand what's happening and address those concerns to the best of our ability as we are moving forward. The Beltline. The concept for the Beltline was born 25 years ago. It started to become a thing about 20 years ago. And we're literally within five years of knocking the whole thing out. So it can happen, but it does take a little while. And then the, the biggest concern isn't listed. Um, this might be an opportunity to put something in the chat if you want to you know, think of that, formulate that in terms of a question. Okay, keep moving here. So the administrative process and timeline, citywide trails plan. So that's Trails ATL. This is what we're doing right now. We are in the this third bullet. We're developing and refining our phase one implementation and greenway plan. Right? So we want folks to, you know, help us refine that because the next step will be to will be issue the report. Um, and then get that in front of city council. And then that is that that's the life of this plan. But this plan also relates to other planning efforts. So maybe some of you have been involved with the bottom, um, the comprehensive development plan known as plan A, which is city planning, right? That means where, what, where are you gonna build a building and how big is it gonna be? Um, they're doing that effort around the city right now. The Trails ATL plan wants to be a part of that. We want to be included in that. So when those decisions are being made at, at a citywide level, that a trail is contemplated, including in the zoning code. So then when we get to the zoning code, we have to be really specific. So that's why this work is really important. And we want to keep doing with this, this with you so that we can embed these concepts into the various parts of the city's bureaucracy so that when they are doing things, they know about these trails, which is that other piece, the Comprehensive Transportation Plan Update. That is a really important effort. It begins in January and lasts for a year and a half. It's going to be a major update. They're going to do a lot of work. They're going to look at street typologies and a trail is a part of that typology. Should this street have a trail or should it be dedicated to transit? So when we were laying out our trail opportunities, we were conscious of where MARTA is now and where their bus routes are intended in the near future. So we tried to think through some of that. We want to get people to the bus, but we don't want to compete with the bus for space in the roadway. So those are some things to consider there with that comprehensive transportation plan coming up this winter. Okay, getting closer. Preliminary phase one implementation strategy. I'm gonna kind of, I wanna explain how we're getting here and then I'm gonna show you where, what we're proposing. Remind you of the process. So in round one, the public told the core team where they wanted to go and how they wanted to get there on a trail. So that's the foundation. Then we came back to the public and said, okay, you told us where you wanna go and how you wanna get there. These are the street trail and the greenway opportunities that the PATH Foundation and the core team see across the city. 
you gave us feedback, right? You told us, don't go there, go here. What about this? What about that? Okay, good. Now we are coming back to you. Uh, number four, preliminary, phase one. That's what we're doing in round three. And that considers the administrative capacity of these different city agencies and the money, right? How much would this stuff cost? So we're starting to kind of think these pieces through. How does all this tie together? How's this actually going to come to life? So this is that round two map. Some of you haven't seen it. And when we we were in round two, we went out to the city council districts, each one. So what you're looking at is a map of four city council districts. You're looking at district 12, district one, district four, and district five, south and east Atlanta. And in those city council meetings, and you know the map would zoom in a little bit because we were just looking at one district. This is what we showed folks. These were the street trail opportunities. That's the orange dashed lines. And then the greenway opportunities, those are the green dashed lines. From our professional experience in collaboration with those city departments, this is what is possible, right? This is the realm of what is possible. Then we also have what's already built and then what is partially funded. Like we've got some money there, but we're not all the way. So I referenced before the East Side Trolley Trail that isn't fully buttoned up from a budgetary perspective. Here is the Lakewood Trail, which leads to this, what is called the South Town Trail. We might look at the naming on this whole process over time, but there's some partial money for that. It's not fully baked in. There's a piece up here, Boulevard Crossing, some of that is already built. So there are pieces and parts in there, but this is what this was the, the base that we're going to work from. And this is what we build off of. When we say preliminary, we mean not final. We need your input to make it final. And it's really city council. When city council votes on it, then it's final. Up until that point, it's a draft. And we're very preliminary at this point. Public will continue to have opportunities for feedback. And your input is a key part of the analysis leading to the final recommended project list. Phase one, what does that mean? Well, something that we can conceivably do in 10 years or so. And it also assumes that it will be followed by a phase two. Right. So that map with all of those lines on it, we think there's a lot of opportunity there, but we can't build all that. I mean, that would take that's going to take a long time. And so we have to phase that out. We've got to be realistic in terms of how much the stuff costs and how important are some of them versus the other ones. So those are the components there. When we say implementation, these are the steps kind of high level. You've got to get the money, you've got to design it, you've got to deal with permitting and go through those permitting processes, which are strict as they should be. Those, those processes protect our streams, they protect our trees, they protect our health and our safety. So that's that permitting process. Then we find a contractor, we build the trail, and then we, oh, we celebrate, right? So that's what we do when we build a trail. Okay, Trails ATL, Preliminary Phase 1 South and East Districts. Taking those trail opportunities and selecting some alignments in a preliminary fashion to seek your input. What if we were to focus on these pretty colors, so the red, the purple and the gold, there's no meaning other than just to distinguish that these are separate trails. I didn't want to give you all the same color and then say, figure it out. We're hoping that by having these different colors, you can just distinguish them where they interact. So your input on these, and we're going to have, we're going to have some more you have an opportunity to weigh in here in a minute. I wanna talk some more about these. I'm gonna go around the horn then I'm gonna show you some images. So the Olympic Trail, let's start in the North, Olympic Trail, that connects from Georgia Tech 
and Midtown along Centennial Olympic Park Drive, Walker Drive Road Avenue, Road Street, uh, Walker Street. Yes, there it is. Walker Street down to Peters Street around to West End Marta Station. So what does that do? It connects West End and the development at West End, West End Marta Station, the Atlanta University Center, and those colleges, Morehouse, Spelman, Morehouse School of Medicine, Clark Atlanta University, and Morris Brown, fantastic institutions, Castleberry Hill Commercial District, downtown and all of those amazing sports facilities, museums that we have, Centennial Olympic Park, Georgia Tech, Midtown. That's an incredible trail. And pieces of this are already kind of in the works. We want to formalize this. Next up, King Trail. These names are draft. These are not the done deal. This was we want to give them names so that people, you know, instead of calling them one, two, three, four, five, we can have a name that seems to be more useful for people. King Trail roughly follows Martin Luther King Drive further to the west, but in this part of the city, we're looking at Westview as it branches off through the Atlanta University Center and connects Castlebury and the Atlanta University Center and downtown to the west side Beltline in a nice, clean, on-street fashion. On these, when you see trail versus greenway, Roughly, a trail is going to be street-oriented for most of it, although maybe not all of it. And then a greenway is going to be greenway-focused for most of it, but not all of it. So the next one down is the Utoy Greenway. And the Utoy Greenway begins at the Beltline and crosses over Donnelly Street, and it is in the Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Land Trust has a project there, and they're, they're granting us an easement. They're so wonderful. That is the headwaters of the Utoy Creek. And we can begin then to build a trail out to the west from there that goes through a neighborhood up to the outdoor activity center, past the wonderful patchwork urban gardens there. If you ever are looking for some produce, they do a, they've got a great greenhouse section over there. Uh, the Bush Mountain neighborhood, a storied neighborhood in Atlanta's past. Um, over then on the other side of Outdoor Activity Center and out, uh, um, out into District 11 and Johnny White Park over to Lionel Hampton Nature Preserve and then on further west. Campbellton Trail. So Campbellton Trail, this is MARTA's bus rapid transit project, Campbellton Road project, includes um, some form of street trails. So we're working with MARTA to get them to design side paths. Everybody, nobody wants a bike lane. Remember that 8% of people would recommend a bike lane. Same thing on the West side. They don't want a bike lane either. It's not that they don't want to be on bicycles or they don't want people to be on scooters. It's that they don't want bike lanes. So we want a side path on Campbellton, and we think that we can make that happen without too much difficulty. That's the Campbellton Trail connecting from way southwest Atlanta up to the Beltline. Airport Trail. Again, these names are made up, but the idea with the airport trail is ultimately to get to the airport and to do so along a, a big chunks of those are uh, would be Greenway. So we can scoot through Perkerson Park, we can go behind. There's a little stream lit back there that is on the back side of Metropolitan Parkway. I'm going to show you some images about that. Crossing over and then just doing the repeating on the uh, south side of, of 166 down there. That same concept where we're set back from Metropolitan and leveraging some of that, the edge zone there that is currently just not really even thought about to provide people a beautiful experience to get from the Beltline down to the airport. Joyland Greenway, so Joyland was an old uh, amusement park back in the day, love the name. There's a neighborhood here called Joyland. Who couldn't be, who couldn't love some joy? So Joyland Trail, again, it's a draft name that wraps around, gets um, down here, ends at Roselle Fan, 
Recreation Center, connecting uh, schools along the way. There are two schools along, elementary schools along the way, a beautiful way for the kids to get to school. South Atlanta Greenway, crucial. This part of the city does not have much by way of infrastructure in usable trails that the community can use to get to places it wants to go, like Southside Park. Southside Park is a big destination, like South Atlanta High School. South Atlanta High School is a neighborhood hub for that part of the city. The Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve, beautiful space. The city's in the process of making it even more beautiful. And then on up <clears throat> into the Thomasville area, crossover, this is Southview Cemetery where some very famous Atlantans are buried. Uh, and then tracking a Norfolk Southern Spur on the backside of Lakewood Heights. So we're really excited about this possibility. We believe that Norfolk Southern might be open to this. Not a done deal, but we, you know, we're not going to go to them until we've come to you. So we're coming to you first to say, do you want this? And if so, then we're going to go try to make it happen. Next up, Thomasville Greenway. Thomasville is a neighborhood that's that has schools. There's a recreation center. It's had it's kind of became known in the press for having some very awful housing. The city has torn this housing down. We are rebuilding some wonderful and respectful affordable housing in this neighborhood. So we want to give access to a trail, use that to come back up, tap into the see the South River Trail over here. South River Trail goes all the way to a monastery in Rockdale County. And it's one of the most beautiful trails ever. Not very many people know about it because it doesn't really connect to anything yet. We're gonna connect it to the Beltline. So when it's connected to the Beltline, then you start to see how the Beltline has a web of trails around the entire region. Grant Piedmont Trail. So this is from Piedmont Park to Grant Park down to the Beltline. We see an opportunity, these are street trails, to connect these major destinations, including even today, there was the, uh, the, the mayor announced that there's um, some work to be done at that old Wellstar Hospital, the Atlanta Medical Center, that they just kind of bolted on us and left us without a hospital. We're gonna redevelop that space. And this will be a trail stop along the way there. So the people who get to live in that space will have access to a trail to go to Piedmont Park one way and Grant Park the other way. Good for them. The Decatur Trail. So this is on DeKalb Avenue and Decatur Street downtown. And this has been something, we've been trying to do something here for many years. And there are a couple of pinch points along the way. That, that's why that hasn't happened. And so, but the, there's just not an alternative. McClendon is not an alternative. To make McClendon an alternative would really anger a lot of people along McClendon. So then what, we don't get anything? No, I think we can do something on Decatur that's respectful, um, that there's a side path opportunity along there. It's gonna require a little bit of you know push and pull in certain areas. We will work with the neighbors on that, but this is a crucial connection in the center of the metropolitan area between the great city of Decatur and the even greater city of Atlanta. And so bringing those together with a, a sensible, legible, safe and inviting facility feels like it's a have to have. Finally, last but not least, the uh, BATL trail. So that's the Battle of Atlanta. And there are a couple of pieces there that connect the Sugar Creek along Sugar Creek. That's this piece. And then you've got some uh, history stuff on trails here. We see great opportunities there. Okay, let me show you some pictures. So this is the Olympic Trail. You're looking at Walker Street in Peters. This is Castlebury Hill neighborhood, obviously the stadium in the background. And this is what it could look like. So we see a side path along here. This is a two, currently two lane southbound that isn't needed. And it ends up, you can't park along here now. So it's just kind of an extra lane. And people will park there illegally, but we think it's so much better as a trail connecting to that 
stadium and to that downtown and behind it to that Georgia Tech and to the left of us to the Atlanta University Center. These are the major institutions of our city and Olympic Trail can bring them together. Here we are, this is the BATL trails. This is Sugar Creek. You wouldn't know it's there, would you? It's, um, it is a disrespected creek, I'm just gonna say. We have not treated Sugar Creek well at all. And so we wanna give it some love and some attention. People don't even know it's there. So the first thing we gotta do is show people, well, here it is and how do you get to it? And this is Clifton Street and it's up on a berm. And so here's what we think we can do for that. So we could have a little tunnel that's not a super deep thing. It's not super wide, but boy, that could open that up. And that could really bring back Sugar Creek weirdly, right? Because it's it's over to the right. And then on the other side of it, you're, you can kind of track along there. And it's kind of full of garbage now. And it's, we need to, we, it needs some love. And I, and this is an opportunity for us to give it some love. Okay, now remember Metropolitan and the airport trail? This is the backside of those commercial buildings. And these are aging commercial buildings, right? So I, you know, I fully expect at some point that these become, that these are torn down and that we have housing that has some kind of retail on the bottom, like as being, that's the thing now, right? And that's good, we need the housing. But even if that weren't to happen, we could take these existing buildings and this not attractive parking lot and do this with it. We could reclaim that concrete. We could reclaim the backs of those buildings and do something very different here. There are a handful of developers that own these, there's really two developers that own these parcels north of Perkison Elementary School and south of Perkison Park. And we can work with them. They've already kind of indicated that, yeah, please bring this stuff on. This is going to add value to the parcels we own. Are you kidding? And so, yes. So we see this as the possibility of almost kind of Beltline East-ish type of thing. Like there could be that level of enthusiasm for this because of what's on the other side of this to the right of the, on this image Atlanta Metropolitan State College and Atlanta Technical College. You've got thousands of students over there, like almost 10,000 students. And here's a place where they could go. Uh, you know, so we wanna know what you all think. South Atlanta, and I just love South Atlanta. And this is a wetland area over here. Really fascinating. There are these streams that all kind of, this is where some of the South River starts to happen, starts to come together and in South Atlanta and South Atlanta High School. And this is what it looks like today. And, and we could do something a little different. We could create a trail along the edge here that goes back and around and links up over to, you can see it, this, this red line over here on the back side, get over to Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve. People don't, there's no way to really, you can get into Lake Charlotte Nature Preserve now, but there's no real parking set up. Do we really want everybody driving to these places? Maybe not, right? Or, you know, let's give them an option. What if the neighborhood could get there and they didn't have to drive? They could walk or they could ride a bike. Wow, we can do that. We can totally do that. Connect this high school to that nature preserve and then going the other way to Southside Park. Wow, okay, connections. Okay, so poll question number five, which three trails are you most excited about? And this is important, just get to pick three or none, right? If you want, you, there's a scroll bar here. Just make sure that you see the scroll bar. So if you're not, you know, you might not be excited about any of these trails.
give that one a minute, may seem so. Macy, what are we, what's it looking like here? Have, you know, anybody need any more time? Oh, okay, there we go. All right, let's see. Well, so good news, <laughs> nobody voted for, I'm not excited about any of these trails or they don't have an opinion. So that's good. Um, South Atlanta Greenway, all right, that's, that's a big one. Look at that. I'm going to move this over here. Can you all you all can see this this on the screen, right? Okay. So what I see here, Airport Trail, BATL, um, Decatur, Grant Piedmont, all getting double digits. Um, I'm not surprised that the ones in the far west aren't the Utoy Greenway and the um Campbellton Trail aren't aren't getting a ton of enthusiasm, but you know that doesn't really impact a lot of y'all living on the on the southeast side. But South Atlanta Greenway, okay, yeah, that's great. I mean, there's such an opportunity here to bring things to a part of the city that just hasn't had that much, right? There's not a trail out there now. There is this trail here in the middle of um, South Bend Park and Swan Nature Preserve that isn't connected to anything, so it doesn't get a lot of use. Most people don't even know it's there. So, but imagine that coming together. Okay, and what was number two then? Number two, Thomasville and Grant Piedmont and BATL. Okay, so Grant Piedmont... Thomasville, and you can see how Grant Piedmont and Thomasville, then you start to imagine that, right? So you can go from Piedmont Park, Grant Park, there's already that wonderful little side path on Cherokee there. Get that down, cross the belt line, hop over and you're in Thomasville and you can all the way to the south side. So you can go from South Side Park to Grant Park to Piedmont Park. And on the way, you can stop at Boulevard Crossing and Chosewood Park. So, wow. Yes. Okay. And, and BATL. Yeah. We, can, we need to do something out there. And we know there's a lot of support on the east side for trails. So that's great to see. Okay. Well, thank you. That's really, really helpful. All right. So, ooh, now the hard part. So we've got about 103 miles of those preliminary trails that we are showing, and that's around the whole city, right? 103 miles around the whole city, of which about 99 miles are not funded. And by the difference, there's that Campbellton piece I was telling you about. Marta's project will pay for, hopefully it's a side path on Campbellton. So that means 99 miles. And we estimate about six million a mile. Um, and that's where the Path Foundation, we do this all the time. I feel really confident in that number. Um, six million a mile, 99 miles, $594 million. Ooh, that's a lot of money. Well, if I win the lottery, y'all are fine because I'm going to devote the whole, I'm going to give just enough so I have a nice house and a nice car and a really fancy bicycle. And then the rest of it's going to go to uh, building out this trail network for you all. If I don't win the lottery, then, you know, we're going to have to look at how do we raise that money. And so there's public opportunities there. There's philanthropic opportunities there. There's federal grant opportunities there. There's t -splost. There are a lot of possible ways that we can, uh-oh, I don't know what that is. Did that pop up? 
um, for you all too. Macy, did you pop up? up? Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so $594 million is the ballpark for the whole city. All of those trails are built. Now, this is a preliminary round. We're confident in the six million a mile, but we're not confident in the 99 miles, right? So some of these may fall off. So this is that's why it's preliminary. But we want to take your temperature on all of these. And then we work with city leadership and we say, okay, we could potentially raise this much money. And the, you know, there seems to be this much enthusiasm for these and not so much for that one. So, okay, maybe that one falls away. And then we're we're saving the ones that people are most enthusiastic about. Um, and then we build a network expansion based on that for phase one. Phase two, that's a few years down the road. Give me 10 years, I'll come back, or I might be retired by then. But Macy will come back and we will have some other folks um, who can, you know, take take it to the next level. Now, considerations on that 594. Got to figure out the funding yet. I'm not pretending that I've got it all figured out. We do not have it all figured out. We're going to continue to work with you all and the powers that be and see what we can do. City staff mobilization would be critical. I cannot emphasize that enough. There, this has to be an emphasis by the city in the same way that the Beltline was, right? And the, you know, make it happen. And that's happening, right? So we would want to work with ATL DOT, Parks and Recreation, Watershed Management in particular, and Public Works, because they are all the ones who deliver projects. That's what they do. We would need to make sure that they are mobilized and ready for that. Those estimated costs do not include security cameras and lighting. So, uh, and there's a couple of reasons. One, we don't know that, that all of these are going to have security cameras and lighting. A lot of those street trails probably would not. The greenways, uh, we assume most of those would probably have, but we would wanna talk to the, to the neighbors about that before we got too far. Um, easement acquisition. So a lot of this is on public land or it's on developer owned land. And with developers, we ask them to <clears throat> donate the easement and to help us build the trail because they're getting the benefit out of it. So, but we don't know if there's going to be some, we ha might have to buy something certain. We don't know what that is. We won't know until we get there. So I don't even try to guesstimate that number. And then if we have extensive green infrastructure, and by that I mean, if we are over there in Sugar Creek, for example, and Sugar Creek has been a hot mess for a number of years and is just been disrespected so much that it needs some stream bank remediation and that can be very expensive. It needs to happen, it's the right thing to do, but it is kind of above and beyond a trail project at that point. Doesn't mean we can't work to make that happen, but those costs are not included in that 594 million. All right, how to give feedback. I can't emphasize enough how important it is for y'all. Please take the survey, round three survey. I appreciate your patience with us. I appreciate you sitting through these presentations taking all these darn surveys, we have to have your input. We cannot do this without you. And this is the best way to give feedback is to take that survey. Because then we've got the numbers and it's the same questions all around the city. It's equitable in that fashion, but we wanna make sure folks on the South side in particular, please get this to your friends, your neighbors, your family members, Please get this out there. We need your input, your feedback. Other ways, send us comments, turtlesatl.com. Send us an email. So eric at Path Foundation, tl buckner at atlantaga.gov. There are meetings. So there will be NPU meetings coming up January, February. There will be public meetings as part of that uh, comprehensive transportation plan update. So there will be other ways for you all to give feedback. But the 
best, the most important right now is to take that round three survey. Okay. Carol, would you like to, to say something for us here as before we kind of dive into questions and, and responses? No, um, I think you did an awesome job of presenting um, the plan that we've been working on with um, internally here and then also um, with the three rounds of community engagement. And um, <clears throat> just that um, I hope everyone does take the survey um, please, please, please give us your feedback, share with your friends. We want these trails to be some uh, places where you will want to go um, and that can be in place for a long period of time. So uh, again, thank you. And that's all I have to, to offer. <laughs> that's great. Thank you, Tara. So Macy, if you would, I would like, to, so since folks have been putting um, comments in there, let's look at the chat. And then pick out the questions. If there are comments, we're going to save those, and those will all be recorded, so I want you all to know. Um, but if there are specific questions in that chat, let's address those before we get to the, the hand raises. Well, I'll just go through the list here. So, um, okay, I'm starting with this. Finish the boardwalk. Okay, that's good. Is there a reason none of these trails extend north? Is a question. Um, they do. They are. This is what the 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 south and east part of the city that we are looking at now. So the trails that are here. So uh, there are trails in North Atlanta too. So we had a meeting last night in North Atlanta that had a map like this that was in North Atlanta. So they there are trails on that side of the city as well. So in this instance, though, you look, you know, there's the Beltline that's already done. So we don't need to do something there specifically. Piedmont Park, you get around Piedmont Park in those instances, but there's there are other trails on the north side. Um, great question. All right, let's see. Thank you. This is really good. Lake Charlotte is amazing. We go walking in each week. So peaceful and historic. I couldn't agree more. Um, Norfolk Southern Rail, Thomasville and Lakewood have been a huge barrier. Yes, hoping the trail connects them. Let's cross our fingers. We see opportunity. We're going to, you know, if you all think this is great and it looks like South Atlanta Greenway's got a lot of enthusiasm, that would be wonderful. Um, let's see, what is this group doing to guarantee the funding stays with the project though through to completion? Um, I don't know yet. I mean, that's we've got to figure out what the funding sources are, and but there's a whole strategy there. That's somebody's PhD dissertation to figure all that out. But it's possible, it's doable. We're gonna start that as part of the comprehensive citywide plan for trails. Um, make this known, we do a lot. Um, and while I would say, um, let me just add that um, while, you know, uh, a response to that is coming is coming sooner than, than later, I just want to point out that we have a, um, a citywide master plan for our parks plans. And uh, at the time, uh, nobody thought that we were going to be able to accomplish the goals in the plan, and we are um, moving ahead very well, thanks to to you all with uh, moving Atlanta forward uh, and the um, the increase in the millage. So, um, I, you know, I think that there are some um, other alternatives um, that we are going to continue to explore, but. Um, you know, you have to have a plan first. Correct. So some other questions here, someone is asking, how will paved paths integrate with the existing mountain bike hiking trails? We bring it, we bring people to those, um, not mess with it. You know, the idea is for a paved trail to kind of not get involved in that space. 
we like our the the green ways to be safe and inviting um, but in that instance that's a wonderful asset I, we don't want to mess with it at all we'd like people to be able to ride their bike to it so you don't have to drive to ride your bike to get drive you know what i mean um so that would be nice um but yeah that's it is a destination that we kind of skirt around let's see um thanks for your patience which trails do you consider as cycling alternatives to help compensate? Oh, from Hank Aaron. Yeah, that's that's a kind of a tough situation. I don't have a great answer for that, but this is along here in the this kind of alignment. You can see this is where the the um, Marta's BRT project goes down here. I kind of I'm really interested in this concept here that connects up uh, along Connolly. There's a few real calm streets in Summerhill, and then there are these wonderful parks. And it would be nice to connect those wonderful parks with a trail that that was good for the because it goes by some schools. You've got King Middle School there too. I love that. Now remember. The we're looking at these phase one preliminary phase one that does not mean these others don't happen. You know, part of that ATL DOT transportation plan, because a lot of these are street trails, they we would talk about that. And so if this becomes in the plan and then they repave Connolly Street, then we have an opportunity to do something for cheap. Right. So those are those opportunities we look for, but we need to get the line on the map so they know to do that. But great question. And thank you for asking that. Um, any opportunity, which is currently not, would love to bring more folks to our corner of the city. Agree. Um, please. OK. Welcome. Got it. Concerned about the Grant Piedmont Trail concept, United Avenue west of the Beltline. You cannot lose on street parking on the segment. Uh huh. Okay, hear that. So um, that's good. So Osmond, if you would send us a note to that effect. Um, okay. Let's see. For example, on street. Okay. Can you email the survey? Yes. And somebody did. That's great. Yeah, because we have a website. The website, we spent a lot of time on this website and it's looking pretty good. I've got to say, I'm quite proud of the work that we've done for not being website experts. Um, so please check out trailsatl.com and then slash round three hyphen survey. And we're going to put this out here. It's in the chat. Um, let's see. I would like to see more low impact soft surface and hard pack trails being considered as well. Okay, good. South Atlanta Greenway, promise that's a question. Okay, I don't think the issue is nobody wants a bike lane. If there's a bike lane, it's a bike lane or nothing. Well, I agree. Yes, <laughs> that's true. So if somebody says, you know, I mean, you can hate on bike lanes, but I'd rather have a bike lane than nothing and agree. We can elevate though. I think Atlanta is in a position now we know enough. We know what people want. We've got the ability to do it. We have to find the will to make that happen where it's really important and where we really want to change people's way of getting around and support a greener, healthier ways of getting around. You know, that's part, that's the idea behind that network there, but I agree completely. Um, opportunity for soft surface trails within our parks, for sure. So these are not, these trails do not preclude um, soft sail, soft surface trails um, in the parks. And in fact, uh, Parks and Recreation will be doing a soft surface trail plan that supplements the trails ATL plan because that's important, right? There are uh, a multi-use trail has a function and the function is recreation and transportation. Those soft surface trails are kind of purely recreation. Like that's where I just need to get away. <laughs> I just want to go have a little moment in the woods. I just need to be away from these people that are getting on my nerves, right? So I fully appreciate and understand that. 
and support that. And again, there may be circumstances where even our mainline trails will end up being soft surface in certain segments. And, I, and I'm giving this a little attitude only because of this. We need to remember any one of us could be in a wheelchair at any moment, and we still want to get out there and enjoy these things. And we want to make absolutely sure that there is a network that people in wheelchairs can access. To me, that's a have to have. That doesn't mean it has to go everywhere. It does not. And our, our, wheel, our people with disabilities focus group was very clear about that. They're like, look, Eric, we don't have to go to every little nook and cranny, but we want to be more than sit in the parking lot, okay? Can you get us, you know, get us through this place so that we can have the experience too? Absolutely, right? So we can do all of these things. Really, we can. All right, um, need to know, okay, good, yes. Okay, I'm going to kind of going through the list here. Um, could you address the weight that you're giving those answers in terms of prioritization? I'm thinking in particular of Greenwood Avenue in East Atlanta, where trail would have huge benefits in connecting East Atlanta residents to the neighborhood business district, local schools, rest of the city via the Beltline at Bill Kennedy. But seems like, um, so let's see. That's a that's a specific question. Maybe iPhone 232, could you email me that and I will attempt to answer that question? I mean, it's a good one, but I don't, I need to, it'll take me too long to figure it out. Um, okay. I don't mean to speak out of turn, but I think there are several of us here that would like to hear the answer to that. Which one's that? I'm sorry. The, the question about Glenwood, like there's at least three people other than that iPhone person here. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. Great. All right. So let's see. Let me let me read this out here. Um, so I'm curious about trails and roads that are currently not conducive to bike and non-car transit. I'm worried that roads like that, which would be made significantly more accessible by, by the addition of a road trail, will be deprioritized because people are more cautious about them. I'm thinking in particular of Glenwood Avenue in East Atlanta. So Glenwood Avenue in East Atlanta, if we're talking west of East Atlanta, between East Atlanta and Bill Kennedy, there's room in the roadway for, you know, we could, they're bike lanes now, right? They're not great, but they could have a little protection. There's room there. When you go east of East Atlanta, it's tougher. And I don't have a really good answer for that side of it, it is on the map. If you look on the map, you will see an orange dash line all the way across there because we understand that that is an important connection. And I, I used to live over there. I still like to ride my bike over there. I want it to be safe and inviting. And so we do the best we can in those street trail conditions. We, you know, if we can get, if we can put the posts in, if we can have a full on side path, great, or a cycle track, great. If we can't, can we at least have a bike lane that has some vertical separation? Most often the answer is yes. Um, but then there are some circumstances where, you know, east of Atlanta, you've got front yards and sidewalks and people get really angry. <laughs> and so we, we tread very cautiously in those spaces. But if you all live in that area and you know neighbors who live on Glenwood Avenue, that's the thing where we need those folks to come together and say, look, we are willing to allow some shift in this roadway so that we can accommodate ourselves using Glenwood as a street trail and full support for that. But it becomes very politically challenging when it's not done from the ground up. So if you all live over there, please work with your neighbors and see what we can do and then support ATL DOT in their comprehensive transportation plan update when they're going to be talking about these things. Because that's where, I'll tell you what happens. There will be a plan for someplace like Glenwood and it's the great, oh, it's gonna be amazing. The neighbors hate it. So, or no, not all the neighbors, some of the neighbors hate it and they are loud and they make us stink and they, you know, they make it impossible for 
the politicians or the commissioners or the people doing the work to do the work. And so it doesn't get done. The way around, and then nobody who wants it shows up to the meeting. So all the council person hears is the, like, I hate it. Well, if they don't hear the, no, we really want this and we really need this and we live on this street. So that's that organization piece. And I would ask you all to do some of that in your neighborhoods and really work with your neighbors. They've done it in uh, North Buckhead, which I would not have expected, frankly. There are streets up in Buckhead that they've already done the work. They are planning for a side path and we are supporting it. It's on the plan because they've done the work. So yes, please. Okay, I think um, that's all. Can we add potential routes that do not include, oh, that, that do include private property? For example, shouldn't we plan for best possible routes regardless of current property owners? Great question, no. <laughs> And here's why, right? So if it's private property as in developer property, absolutely. If it's single family homeowners, forget about it. They are not going to have it. It isn't going to work. We have 33 years of experience of getting run out of meetings, of getting run out of neighborhoods. I don't want to stir them up like that. I try to find every other way to go first. Now, as I was saying just a little bit ago, if you can work with some neighbors mm, on the very edges, but I'm not going to get in their backyard, I might try to be in their front yard a little bit if they'll have me. But mm. most often the answer is no. So we really try to not stir people up like that. But I really appreciate that question. So work with your neighbors. If there's a neighborhood plan, if there's a green space behind y'all's house, and you could see collectively and uh, you know the value there and you all get together and say, hey, city of Atlanta, we think there's this great greenway opportunity in our backyards and we are willing to give an easement collectively, all of us to do that. We will so show up, we will so show up. But the odds of that happening are not high. But I love that question. Thank you for asking it. Um, okay, so. Thank you. Now, there's a couple of folks with their hands raised. Cody, I think you've had yours up. You've been very patient. Cody, please um, unmute and, and, and let us know what you're thinking. Thank you, Eric. Um, I, I want to start by saying I appreciate you finding opportunities and, and seizing on them um, as best you can in the stage in the process. Um, I do have a concern that there is not sufficient east to west connectivity uh, in this map, or there, if you look, there's a lot of leaning on the belt line to help with all that. And that would mean for some people to get a mile east to west, they would have to travel several miles out of their way, which would benefit those with higher incomes closer to the belt line. And as a result would be inequitable. Um, it would also act as a bottleneck at the belt line as it becomes as busy as the east side belt line. And I think we would really appreciate being able to get to other parts of towns without traveling miles and miles away. Um, and, and I'd like to see that in your plan and funded. I would personally, and I can't speak for everyone, I'm in 30310, I would personally be willing to give up some of my favorite trails on this map just to get east to west, not on the Beltline. So that's just my take on that, and I appreciate you listening. That's great. No, thank you very much. And I that is very insightful. Um, you know, there's an eat that you you brought up income perspective on that. Couldn't agree more. Um, you brought up the future when the belt lines, you know, the belt line will get busy. You're right. That's a whole thing. Um, maybe when you're thinking about and send us an email and say, hey, this is, you know, when I'm thinking east west, this is what I'm talking about. That would be helpful. And, you know, let's see, let's see where that goes. I think that's, that's absolutely valid and nicely stated. And thank you very much for that input. That's really valuable. Um, let's see. So Griffin. Hey there, Eric. Uh, my question had a little bit to do with um, unconnected network opportunities, specifically with the uh, Battle of Atlanta trails. Um, 
I, I know a lot of, not necessarily these projects, but some of the other ones have had issues where the project is considered sort of its own bubble without um, thorough connections to other locations in the city. For example, the current, I know it's not you guys, but the Memorial Project, where it just sort of stops short at Pearl Street as it heads eastward, where it just yeah. doesn't connect to the Beltline. And we're just sort of, you know, figure your own yeah. way from here. Right, right, um, right. And I'm also seeing that concern with the BATL trails, uh, because East Atlanta Village is such a high desired uh, destination, um, oh, as planned now, they would, for example, to get from East Atlanta Village to, let's say, Croc Street Market, you would have to first go, well, like Cody said, like all the way east, up, all the way back west, waiting for several lights in between. Um, and I know that some of this is to avoid larger uh, thoroughfares, like more than is a beast to get over. I get that. But mm. I am worried about picking more comfortable or scenic routes over more direct and accessible ones. Great comment and interesting too. I mean, you're putting your both, I mean, those both putting your finger on the challenges that we face when we are looking to create a network that is safe and inviting, right? So, but we don't want, there is an emphasis on greenway pieces here because if you remember, people want greenways, right? They want that experience. And we know that there's, this could be parks. So that that could be park money can help pay for some of that. Um, and then there's the transportation piece, which is why we work closely with DOT on this and why we will be working with them, hopefully, when they do their comprehensive transportation plan update so that it's this, these discussions are continued and that is, those are excellent points and I agree. We've looked at how can we do something on Moreland? What are the alternatives to Moreland? There really aren't any. I mean, it's a, it's a stinky situation and we've got East Atlanta, we've got Little Five, and we've got Edgewood Retail. They're all right there. And people just end up driving because there's no other way to really, you know, you can walk, but who wants to walk along Moreland? Gross. I or actually, you're way um, far away, right? And I have so a little what? bit of a personal anecdote because I did used to live in that neighborhood. And the only way across both 20 and Moreland, which are both GDOT, um, you know, routes, uh, is the Beltline because you'd have to, you know, do the same thing. All the way Track down, back west, go down south. All the way back. Yeah. yeah, work work up the big hill through Glenwood, mm. which yeah, you, you you can't really do anything with Glenwood west of Moreland because of like you said, personal property. People don't want their lawns to be taken away. I get that. Um, We're doing what we can though, and but there are things we can do, and we do, you know, we try to skinny some lanes up and bump some curbs around, and you know, there are some things we can do. Um, and that's what this this the background plan that you're looking at, the orange lines and the green lines really contemplate those road widths, those road volumes, the safety piece of all of that. We really try to pull that. To, that's that network back there. And there's real value back there. But we need you to help push those agendas with uh, ATL DOT. OK, let's see. Somebody else here. Um, was it? Let's see. Jack, yeah, I'm sorry, Jack. Yes, thank you very much. Hi, uh, so I'm Jack Rundler. I'm the MPUW Transportation Committee Chair currently. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, that's great. Thank you. So, you know, I've been in East Atlanta for 14 years now. Um, we've been, you know, trying to get Battle Trail for that entire time, if not longer. Um, but some of these other trails, like the Grant Piedmont Trail and the Thomasville Greenway, I, as the NPU Transportation Committee Chair, I'm only hearing of for the first time tonight. Um, so I'm wondering where where did some of these ideas come from and why haven't, I mean, I don't know, am I just doing a poor job or, or are these new brand new concepts that haven't been communicated until now? And new concepts that haven't been communicated until now? Okay. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the purpose of a citywide trail plan. One is that we look uh, at Bob the Rose previous, Smith? sorry, go on, yes. Can I also add that um, once a month we 
distribute the um, uh, Department of Parks and Recreation highlights. And every month we just let people know that the trails plan is being developed. So, um, and then anything else I should? Good. I mean, Jack, this is, you're right. I mean, there are plans that have been there for a hundred years. Yeah. And we need, and so the battle trails, they're there. And then there are other needs too. There are needs and then there's opportunities. And we try to bring those together. And when I say opportunities, we're looking at that street network, we're looking at every one of those streets and saying, could we possibly do a street trail here or not? Some streets just isn't going to work, right? Other streets, yes. And we think, okay, there's room here to do something that would work that gets us most of where we want to be. And NPUW has a lot of, there's a lot of stuff there, isn't there? Now, the Thomasville Greenway, these are new concepts, some of which are little snippet pieces like the Thomasville Greenway from Grant Park down to, um, to McDonough is actually been in the Beltline sub area six master plan since 2009. So that segment has long been there and we are bringing it forward here. The piece that wraps around, a lot of that's brand new, right? There are some opportunities that have come up in Thomasville that didn't exist before. And so we've we've been trying to- make neighborhood to include housing, right? I'm sorry, iPhone two. Let's see, maybe we can. Okay, very good. So, Jack, I'm sorry. Yes, ask some more. I mean, you you sound like you've got some yeah. other comments um, here, and you and I can talk offline as well, and I would be happy to do that. Yeah, um, it, but... it's just that I'm looking at these things, and admittedly, they look pretty neat. Um, but I also am a little bit concerned about how, for example, Battle Trail has already um, sort of been shoved to the back of the line a couple of times in terms of funding. And uh, I, it, seeing these these other lines on this map make me, makes me worry that that's, be, that's about to happen again. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I don't get to make the call on that one. We're putting these ones out there. We're kind of assessing people's um, enthusiasm for them. And also there's, you know, there are other factors that have to be considered, like, are they, are they equitable kind of on a broader scale? Are they, are they serving a neighborhood that doesn't really have anything right now? So parts of East Atlanta are pretty well served by trails. And in fact, uh, district two and five are, are probably the best trail connected uh, city council districts that we have. Um, does it mean that there doesn't need to be more? Of course there does. For the record, um, East Atlanta has zero off-street trails in it right now. I mean, to say we have trails is ridiculous. This yeah, is the only trail that we have, and it's just an orange line on the map. Point taken. We've been talking to Pat for probably 20 years now about the Battle Trail, and it's finally an orange line on the map. That's what we're concerned about. Yeah. That's good. You know, this is important. About it taking 25 years, if it takes 25 more years, we'll wait for it. But I, I won't get to enjoy it. I know that. Well, mm -hmm. I would like you to get to enjoy it. And so this is why this is Me in too. the, you know, the, I, mean, <laughs> Me too. I mean, I'm right there with you. I am right there with you. I'm yeah. going to be 60 years old next year, and I'm not trying to be dead when most of this stuff gets built. So I'm there. I'm and, 62. Tell me about. There you go. We're all in the school. We're in the school. I got you there. Well, yes. I, um, Other things. So let's see that we've got. Um, Tara, are you all right if we hang on for like three more minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And so, and I just can I just add that um, you know if you all haven't noticed since 2020 we've had this um, master plan of which um, the trails and wayfinding. Um, uh, recommendations um, came out of. And so we've been working really hard to um, make this an equitable um, development. And so we have this equity data tool. We look at that when we're making priorities. Obviously, your council person is involved. 
um, we share with the MPUs. Um, we have Moving Atlanta Forward um, money, and uh, there's a website that you can go and you can see all the things um, that um, are happening with um, with uh, your um, your bond dollars. And so we're doing a lot more transparent um, things so that you could see in terms of parks and rec, um, you know, what things that you have been asking for, as you've said, for 20 years. Well, the interesting thing about that, a lot of people say, I haven't seen anything for 25 years. And uh, for a very long time, um, Parks and Rec did just not have enough resources to work with. And so in the last couple of years, um, after our plan, um, I think you all kind of bought into it. And so now we can say, we can move Atlanta forward. <laughs> right, there's some money. That's true. I mean, that's there's true. some money, and so, but, but, but back to the the whole idea of um, communities not getting the resources. So um, again, using these new tools that we have developed, um, we want to make sure that um, this is not just a plan for you know around the belt line that we are um, connecting neighborhoods and that those neighborhoods can. Uh, either go to other city of Atlanta neighborhoods or they can go outside of the city of Atlanta. Um, you know, I always say this thing where you can, you know, soon you'll be able to go from the uh, heart of Atlanta all the way to Alabama. So. In a trail. Yes. On a trail. Of... Sorry, I forgot my whole thing. <laughs> yes. No, that's so good. Just take yourself on a trail that, you know, but, um, but really I, I hear exactly what you're saying. And um, while I cannot guarantee first of all, I'll be honest, all of this, this, you're just looking at one segment. All of this is not going to be, a, we're not going to be able to do all of this um, in one year or two years. Um, but we hope that um, we can get more of this developed. But the first step is to have a plan. For sure. And your council member support, which you have, by the way. So Council Member Bakhtiari, who's an amazing person, um, has been very supportive of this planning effort. I think she had intended to try to be here this evening. Um, that didn't work out, but she's been very supportive of this. And I met her out in this area and we looked at um, the, the that northern part there in that kudzu infested patch by those beautiful um, Civil War era oak trees and talked about how we could connect Cone Park down following Sugar Creek across the god awful floor and decor parking lot um, back to where Sugar Creek gets to have a life again. And um, yes, there's some really amazing opportunities there. And yes. So I want to make sure Paula Cooper Smith. Still out there, Paula. You could unmute yourself, and I would love to hear if you've got anything to say. Hi, Eric. Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. I was having trouble with the mouse. Um, okay, I'll start off by saying, well, I'm 65, so I'm the oldest so far. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to say, Tara, I know that you've been kind of fielding this at the city of Atlanta, uh, talking head in the room, and I think the theme here this evening in this meeting is uh, restore our confidence. Okay, and and that is um, something that you guys can 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 really do. All right, Eric. I mean, path like that's been. I have been really happy watching that grow the way it did for the last thirty some odd years. I I believe in it. I do understand as an old woman that it takes a while. Um, but I also understand you're asking us to do two things, reach out to our council members and also create enough critical mass to do so. All right, we're not going back to tell anyone that we believe in this until you give us the teeth to go back and share with our folks, right? Like all of our folks. Um, so, 
So help us with that. I think, you know, some believable messaging, some, and I, I get that you're saying, you know, we're kind of in this planning stage and everything like that, but um, give us the language and the teeth to go proselytize and bring our humans together. I love the fact that, you know, we are in Y and I am hearing, uh, who's the dude in W in transportation? Okay, he's going to be my new BFF. All right, because yeah, Jack. That's Jack, yes. All right, because you know, to be very honest with you, as a neighborhood down in Lakewood Heights, we do not have enough votes for Jason Winston to make a difference in his life. So we need you, W, and let's work together on that and start talking to our neighbors more. Same with uh, who uh, East Atlanta. You know, uh, we need to create coalition and. We need something from you all that signals we really should have faith and not be pissed. We can all go into the Google Wayback Machine and find everything that paid people salaries to start these conversations with us. And then there, we had nothing. Okay, so I love this. Just give us give us some good uh, some good notes. Reason and, to believe. And, and and let me just say, we're talking about trails, but I keep going back to our parks plan. Um, you all are in an area where there is a park called um, Rebel Valley Park, a right. park that really has has not has really been neglected for a while um, right. because of these efforts. And again, the, the planning that is, is being done right now, um, a, you're, you know, uh, Rebel Valley Park, which is at the, um, um, the at the confluence of two, two creeks, is right. yes. is going to get so many improvements, it's going to sink. Okay, but, um, well, you know, Lakewood <laughs> Heights has a lake that is there, but completely obscured and covered from our community. Okay, South Bend Park is a little over 60% operational because of invasive species. And when you talked about uh, the Swan Preserve, the reason people aren't using the trail is because it's also covered over. So Tara, Tara uh, we've talked about that you. too, yes. Yes, I'm gonna follow back up with you because okay, call, Kathy, uh, Kathy call Evans me. in the Arborist office, we have a grant, okay? So That's good. Let's combine yes. forces. And now I will shut up and let other people. Come no, over. no, Paula, thank you. I am just, that was really helpful. And we need to hear those things. And I want other people to hear these things too. I mean, it's true. There is a faith issue that happens in with city governments. And the history of Atlanta is that it, you know, we, we, we're coming from being a not super rich town to having more money. We've got more money than we've had, relatively speaking, maybe ever. And so right. there are some opportunities there that weren't mm -hmm. there before. And there is a work culture that is being developed that is happening in the city. Tara is an excellent example of city staff who works so hard for you. And there are other Terras out there and we're thankful for them. Um, we need more because Tara can't do it by herself, right? That's that staff capacity piece. We have to make sure that those departments have the staffing that they need to deliver these projects and not end up with a project manager who has like 30 projects. And they, you can, what? Well, they, well, we're no. just gonna come down to Tara's office to volunteer our time on, you know, when she asks us to. But in the meantime, anybody here, like I heard somebody mention 30310, Okay, once again, we have pockets of neighborhoods that do not by themselves amount to enough votes for a city council person to give a flip. Those neighborhoods who are in these meetings need to coalesce with larger neighborhoods that actually matter to city council members. And then we all work together to knock this out. We are the Emerald Necklace. Yes, so, you are the Emerald. That's the way it works. But anyway, Indeed. thank you guys Indeed. so much. It's really no, nice to course. meet everyone in here. Likewise. Um, Philip Rodney, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, so honestly, I probably had about a million things that I could chime in on. But 
Uh, the biggest one was coming back to, uh, I think maybe Jack was talking about that um, access between East Atlanta and Edgewood and Little Five Points and Reynoldstown and just that whole area um, and getting across Merland Avenue. And I just wanted to point out that there is a current project that GDOT is working on to uh, redo that interchange. And I personally am not happy with the plans that they've put forth. And I know a lot Me of other neither. people that are not happy. Second day. And if you, um, I'll paste the link in the chat. If you are also not happy, then, um, you know, in Edgewood, we've been working with um, Councilperson Bakhtiari and our representative, uh, Syra Draper. And, you know, anything Good. that we can do to, to continue to put pressure on, on GDOT and get them Good. to address those plans. It's a lousy design. I'm so mm -hmm. disappointed. I am so disappointed. If they had done nothing from a trail perspective, we would have been better because there would have been room for us to put a trail on the west side of that <laughs> god-awful bridge. Mm -hmm. Now there's not even that. So well, we've been out there. We've spent a lot of time. I brought my project managers out there. We looked at that from six ways to Sunday to figure out how can we get across I-20 and connect East Atlanta into the rest of the energy there. And short of GDOT, doing something different, it's going to be a struggle. So thank you for your leadership on that. I know uh, uh, Council Member Bakhtiari will support you. I don't know about the state representative. That has to happen, though. So keep mm -hmm. up that. Keep that up, because this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity we're about to lose. Yep. So. Yep. That's what that's what we've been saying. And um, yeah, and, and we did. Um, Jack, I don't know if you were involved but uh, we we started talking to East Atlanta um, and involving them also. Yeah, you need to just raise a stink for real because that's it's simply not okay. And there's enough people at GDOT who who will understand that. You know, that's a big machine, and it ugh, getting it to change anything is so 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 hard. But I feel like the only opportunity is for y'all to get together and raise a serious stink and say not okay. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, and the, and the yeah. way I see it, you know, um, there's still time. There's always still time. They haven't, you know, they haven't broken. There's not always yet. still time there, are, but there's not. I mean, so it's got to happen like yesterday. Well, because they're well, about to I go mean, to bid. The design well, is baked and that's what they're doing their thing. And they're going to start mm -hmm. bringing in the the machines and then we're done. Right. And so. Oh, no, absolutely. And I didn't I didn't mean that in any way to to say that, you know, we can laze around. I, I meant that to say, um, you know, let's not give up on this uh, just because they say that they're. Um, yeah, they've already said it's too late. They've I'm said it's too late. Them, and, and, I, and I went and I talked to them. I said, isn't there anything we can do? And they're like, no. Yeah, so but at this that's point, neat, we, what right? we need is like a that's a, a big... freeway revolt type of mobilization to stop it. But uh, for what it's worth, I myself proposed a uh, a cycle track across Moreland uh, over I twenty, probably close to a decade ago. I know some of the people on this call have seen it, um, seen the drawing I made. But uh, yeah, G dot has been. GDOT has been treating us with deaf ears for a long time on this. And so we need, like, it, it is it is not a um, matter of educating GDOT about what we want. It's a, it's a matter of bringing political will to bear against GDOT. Mm -hmm. Because they are, frankly, hell-bent on completely ignoring Biconped um, needs on Moreland. In this particular project, I do want you all to know that GDOT has made a sea change in its in what it will do for bicyclists and pedestrians compared to what it was even five years ago. There's been a huge change that we've had that activity on Memorial, even though it isn't complete, is a sea change for GDOT. So I want to I don't want to throw them completely under the Mercedes. Um, but yes, let's, and then we'll take one more question here and then I'm hungry for dinner. So, <laughs> um, so I phone too, if you would be so kind on mute and, and let us know what you're thinking. iPhone two, are you out there? 
Uh, maybe, maybe that's me. Yes, I yes. believe it is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super brand new to all of this. I'm actually here on behalf of a friend who wasn't able to make it. Um, I know that his major concern is about like the West Ends kind of getting overlooked. And as I'm listening and kind of listen to how this whole thing works, and I love everything that you're saying in terms of like what the goals are and making sure it's like not happening to communities. Um, but I also think about how communities that are traditionally underserved are primarily working class or underemployed engagement in these kind of things, you know, is an extra barrier. Um, sure. and, as I, and as I'm listening further, right. I'm starting to shape out this feeling that communities are in some way in competition, right? Like East side is very well represented and like, I want East side to get what it gets, right? What it needs. Um, but it almost in some ways also feels like across, like, like we've got all of these ideas um, and we can only do some of them, or even if we do all of them, they're going to be prioritized in a certain, in a certain way. And it comes down to this like neighborhood by neighborhood engagement. Um, and I like, I guess, you know, to help me shape out and understand how these things work in the way that you're doing these things, um, you know, is, is sort of my broad, broad sort of question. And alongside that, like in the same vein, um, you know, just get your community out, just the more engagement, the better, get all the surveys, which like, yes, that's motivation. But is there like a metric, right? Like if a thousand people from a community you know, turn in the survey, is that a, is that a metric of like, that's a, right. Like you, like you, that community now has enough engagement to, to actually have weights, you know, do you know what I mean? Yes. And so um, there's, there's a political component to this, which is why we're engaging you. And the political is public is y'all's thoughts and opinions and what, who will, who's, who is interested in this stuff enough to show up to a meeting? Who's mm -hmm. got the wherewithal? Who's got the the capacity? Who has the understanding? Who you know? Who's got the cultural power? Um, those kinds of questions. Yeah. And so that is those folks get a you know this this gets a that gets some attention, right? It doesn't get all the attention, but it gets some of the attention. And if you want a metric and you want me to put a number to it, I'm not going to do it. Because yeah. that it can't be that way, right? So we are going. We are looking at the the city leadership, the commissioners of these different departments, the council members, the mayor's office. Folks are looking yeah. at this and saying, "Okay, we need to be. We need to be able to. Everybody needs to get a piece of this, right? On some mm -hmm. level, and and to the best of our ability." This is what we've laid out for the city where we think there's some balance here. There's some mm -hmm. utility. It gets people where they told us they wanted to go. There's still a lot more to do. And you are so right. I mean, Jack, mm -hmm. you know, nailed a bunch right. of these and the folks who were like, yes, West End. Let's look mm -hmm. at West End here. Mm -hmm. West End is going to we've got two major trails that would serve West End on the edges there. But there's yeah, I see those. Little, we still need. And we've pitched some ideas to the NPUs and West End, and they love this concept mm -hmm. of a kind of a, a, a neighborhood paseo that goes in the background behind the schools, behind some of those areas, connects kind of in a back, um, you know, alleyway network. They loved that. East Atlanta loved that. The Little Five Points neighborhood also really appreciates those concepts. Those are things that can also be done. Like just mm -hmm. because there are these big trails doesn't mean other things can't also happen. Mm -hmm. When the streets are repaved, when the sidewalks are done, when those sidewalk projects happen, yeah. watershed management is doing two hundred million dollars worth of work in Westview. They're going to tear up every street in that neighborhood. What a great opportunity, right? We won't have to mm -hmm. pay anything, then. we just come in and go. Okay, we're going to do this over here and over here, right? So those are those pieces that are in there too. Yeah. Okay. So, so is, there, is, there, is there anything uh, reasonable in my cursory understanding that uh, communities are in somewhat competition uh, in, in sort of a natural way, not like a malicious way, but there's a natural competition that occurs? Or is there a deeper understanding that I can accumulate as I continue to participate in these meetings? 
Well, um, can, can I offer just a little bit more in terms yeah. of deciding um, which trails would go first? Um, I'm not, first of all, I'm not going to answer your question to probably to the extent that you're looking for an answer. This one is going to go first and this one is going to go second. Sure. But uh, just like the same process that we used when we looked at Activate ATL mm -hmm. and we looked, we, we put together this equity data tool, which is available to everybody to look at, you know, where our parks are, where our parks of greatest need are, where our parks of least need are. Um, um, and uh, it, it, it takes into account some census data, um, uh, social determinants of health, uh, some other data. And so, so we don't use that one tool, but we use that tool along with you know, where can we align um, with other funding um, opportunities? I think um, uh, Eric mentioned that um, we learned that there is a neighborhood that is, you know, need, in need of a great deal of um, uh, sewer upgrades. And so we want to be on top of that new sewer. Um, yeah. yeah. And so uh, then, of course, the, there's that political piece. Yeah, and that's important. But it's not like we're going to sit down and say, oh, Five people over here are interested in this trail, but 35 people over here said that they want this trail. So the 35 get to get to read. We have to figure out how this right. all fits together, mm -hmm. um, how we can partner with um, the other departments and other resources to bring that. Um, but the conversation, I, I think the, the most important thing, I think, is that we want to keep having the conversation as we develop this plan, not just today, not just when this plan is adopted, but you know we do, but you know we do the first year, and we're still having a conversation. We're still, you, you know, we're we're working on this, and and you're a part of it. Okay, okay, no, that's that 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 is that that is helpful. That is helpful. I don't expect I don't expect clean answers to these questions, but. Thank you. Okay. It really does too. I mean, they're great questions. Okay, so this is our last poll question. And this is where we get graded. And so <laughs> this is the, um, you know, how are we doing? Are we doing a great job? Are we doing a terrible job? Are we doing something in the middle? So, and this is just about outreach in general. It's not just about this meeting tonight. It's not about me. It's not about Tara. It's about kind of what do you know about Trails ATL? You know, how are we doing? Do you, does it feel like we're doing a, how are we doing? So we want you to rate us on that. And that's important, right? This is real, real feedback. And say, okay. Okay, Macy, how'd we do? Okay. Looks like I'm, oh, we'll get a C. <laughs> Maybe a C plus. That's good. And we'll take a C plus. That gets degrees, but but it does tell me there's more work to do. Yeah. And, so and I, what, we, I really, what we heard is, is um, we need to uh, build some confidence, right? Well, for sure. But that's on the meta scale, right? Like, um, but we also need to, do you know do more how do you feel trails atl has done in terms of public outreach we've got some work to do for sure and you all could help us um please spread the word i'm gonna i'm gonna um pull back this up here this is a qr code the qr code for the round three survey because i know y'all want to take it and you want to share with your friends your family members and especially your neighbors who have an interest in anything city and please get them to take this survey the more numbers we have that's important data you know i can't go to everybody's house and with my little pad and say so tell me about you know that can't happen but this is this, this is a, a proximate for that and and i really you know especially our friends in south atlanta who are have been traditionally underrepresented in these meetings want to make sure that they you know that the word gets out we've worked very closely with the council members here including council member winston council member lewis council member dozier 
Council Member Bakhtiari. They have been very supportive of these efforts. It's a vacation week, and I feel like people are away on vacation because school's out. So schools are out, mm -hmm. and the parents are like, I'm going to the... I'm going somewhere, somewhere where a hurricane hasn't messed up and, you know, and relax a little bit. Um, so thank you all very, very much for your time this evening and uh, your insights and your enthusiasm mean a lot and will be reflected um, as we move forward. If you've got any other questions, I'll put this back up here. And those are our email addresses. Those are the ways to get a hold of us. But the most important one of all is the survey. So. Yeah. And let me say it again. I'm going to put it in mine in all caps in the email because there is an L in there and people sometimes do not see that it is tlbuckner at atlantaga.gov. All right. All right, y'all. Um, thank you very much for your time. We will be in touch. Appreciate everything that you do to make our city great.